thousand dollar bills that you only got ten. Don't matter what you did Walk on your tiptoes Don't time no boast Better stay away from us And carry around the fire hose Keep a clean nose Watch your flame blows You don't need a weatherman To know which way the wind blows Don't get hit, but Jesus, cheat us, six times use us, hang around the theaters, girl by the whirlpool, put them on new floor, don't follow leaders, watch your pocket meters. Oh, well, I mean, just through, I'm just a, um, uh, I'm mostly influenced by film, by film, and uh, I'm trained as an art historian, and then as an artist after that. I have my undergraduate degree in art history from NYU, and then my master's degree in fine art. Most of my um, work is based in notions of art history, notions of film history that I sort of allied. I'm also a huge reader of fiction as well. I read very little theory or philosophy except when friends like Larry introduce me to things. And so um, I literally read, like I read uh, Mille Plateau uh, backward. I mean, I read, I read it from the um, index 
actually backward, because I didn't have any concept about how to read it, because I'd never been taught to read that kind of text. And basically, essentially what I do is I grab from it, and then I make, mix the ideas. So these ideas about becoming animal, and then some ideas, obviously, I just ripped out of Derrida. But a lot of these things are things I'd been thinking about, and then I had seen them finally, because people like Larry introduced me to something, and then I find the thing I was thinking about expressed in a text like that. And then that inspires me to move somewhere else with it. But I'm not particularly schooled in it. It's just sort of an inspiration for me. Yeah, that's not a very complicated answer, but that's no, the that's answer fine. as an artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, so my, my, I guess my name is part first is um, uh, what, what do you mean by screw market and also how uh, and why? How and why? Because it deserves it? Well, because the... And the final part is um, uh, do you think that by putting that into your art stage and marketing yourself that way um, is Not particularly now. I've never been a market artist, and I've never been a person who has <laughs> succeeded market-wise, and I never was interested in it because I have a different kind of set of beliefs about being an artist. And uh, the belief system that goes along with being an artist now has to do with the market. And the market has driven um, artists to behave and to make work in a particular way. I've never made work in that way. Most of my work has gone unsold. Um, I teach to support myself, and I don't uh, support, and I've vehemently written against uh, the majority of art that is market-driven work. And yes, I do have galleries, I have major galleries, but I'm an artist who galleries keep around for, um, uh, what do you call it, for some kind of cachet. I'm an artist who doesn't sell, but who gives them a certain kind of patina of being um, uh, not a retail operation, let's say, for example. I'm a museum artist. Um, and the whole screw the market thing was that was done, this piece, that, that show was made at a time when um, uh, the market ruled everything. And you see that um, in all of the art being made at that time. And now you're going to see, obviously, exactly what was supposed to happen, and that is that the market's crashed. And you're going to see a lot more art that's being made that looks something like this or goes along these lines that is not made to be bought or can barely be purchased. Um, so yeah, it was about that. It is about pointing to that. And the statement, keep the faith, means stick with it because it'll go, it'll come back, it'll go, it'll come back. But it's always at a moment when people, when the market fails that the greatest art is made. And so that's why the whole statement is actually pertinent, just, not just the one line, but the entire thing, which is beauty has depth, history has meaning, screw the market, keep the faith. And the point about that is that very little art that uh, is made by artists of my generation and subsequent generations uh, is, uh, contains any knowledge or um, acknowledgement of the history of art uh, the nature of beauty, the qualities of beauty, the complexities of beauty, and it acknowledges only the market, and that is why it is made. And so that's why it's a pretty strong statement for me, and um, I decided to do it. And I was really poor at the time. <laughs> I couldn't make any money. It was like watching people. It was right after I had this dinner, okay? I was at this dinner, right? And... Um, this curator from this big museum said, did you see the latest Bill Viola? It cost six million dollars. And I said, yeah, but is it good? And everyone just looked at me and I was like, but is it good? It costs six million dollars. You're gonna like, um, trying to impress me with numbers? You know, Hollywood makes, you know, a, a second of film for six million dollars. And then someone else said, oh, well, yeah, but the latest Matthew Barney cost three million dollars. And I was like, yeah, and it's crap. It's like the whole point was they were judging art by how much it cost to make it. Do you know what I'm saying? And so that was very important to me, was to make a statement. And I've always been a pain in the ass to the art world, so I continue to be. And I've written about it, and I've lectured about it, and I've done panels, and have...